All right, what's up, everybody? So we're gonna we're gonna get right into it today, and I want to talk a little bit about Kerf. So we're gonna go under a few assumptions here. Is one, this is gonna be heavily biased towards uh, CO two lasers um, because you know they're the ones that are the most notorious for this. But basically, um, most lasers, as they go through a focal lens, will have a dedicated focal point. And what happens is it creates this crossover hourglass looking shape here. And, you know, your standard CO2 laser is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 50.8 millimeters or two and a half inches, give or take, from the surface of the lens down to where the beam is the narrowest. And so what happens is that becomes your focal distance. And your focal distance has a lot to do with curve. So let's get rid of that. And take this and for the most part usually material is going to get focused at the top so when you focus material at the top uh, what ends up happening is if you put your focal point right there you end up with this uh, non-parallel uh, shape through the material as it burns so as it burns this away um, it doesn't burn a perfectly perpendicular rectangle shape in the material it burns at this hourglass shape so what ends up happening is you lose more material on one side or the other whether you're focused on the top um, whether you're focused on the bottom uh, same thing it's going to remove more from the top if you're focused in the middle can't help you much there i mean that's going to be a shape that's going to give you a gap top and bottom although it'll be less pronounced um, you know and that's if you're really going for deep cuts that's probably the right way to go but for the case of what I'm talking about today, which is going to be things like marquetry work, uh, inlays of, you know, one material into another, fitting a, a plug into a hole, positive into a negative, however you want to take it, um, this is the way most machines are going to focus. So they're going to focus that beam right on the top of the material. So you're going to end up with basically a shape that looks like this when it's cut. Now, Let's take an example. This is a working example here. Um, I've got the piece on the left is going to become my main base piece, whatever, my negative. And then I'm going to have a second piece of material that I'm going to cut a plug out of or a positive. So when I run my cut on this material, you'll see here what's going to end up happening is this piece in the middle here is what's going to drop away and that gap between there that's your kerf so your lasers burn this away so no matter what shape you have here your lasers burning away a certain amount of material so that's your kerf it's just like if a saw blade was running through there it it turns that width of that saw blade into sawdust that gets lost and never recovered so the piece that drops out of here is not going to be a clean fit back in there it's going to fall right through just as if you know you had just cut it so let's consider that that's gone. And now we're left with the negative. Now the positive side, I'm cutting out of another piece of material. And I've got, in this case, I've got a, you know, a positive kerf offset. So it's going to make that piece of material slightly bigger um, to accommodate that. And so what's going to happen is if I were to cut this as is, when I go to put the two together, they're going to end up mating or trying to mate in such a way that looks like that. So they're not going to be, um, you're, you might get one side flush, but the other side's going to have a gap. And let's say I wanted to, I got done gluing this in and I want to come through and I want to sand this. Well, if I sand away that little bit of material at the top, I'm now exposing a gap here in the material. Um, so that's not ideal. And whether, depending on where you're focused, it could be that way. Um, it could be where they're both flipped over that way. Um, so one side or the other is going to have that gap because that's just the nature of the way that they burn. So I propose a way to resolve this is to take either piece, I don't care which piece, but one of the two pieces and flip it over in your design and then basically burn it face down <coughs> or cut it face down. And so what that'll do is let's take this piece and flip it over. And now my opposing faces are going with that imperfection to the point where they're going to mate up. And so when I pull these two together, you'll see that I can close up that gap on the top and gap on the bottom. And no matter how much material I expose through sanding or whatever, I'm still keeping a solid mating surface all the way down. 
Um, and so just by flipping over one piece and going with that, you know, basically going with the cut imperfection, it's the same as in woodworking. If I'm going to be edge jointing every other board, I want to flip over and cut upside down. So if my table saw blades, not perfectly 90 degrees, well, I'm going to allow for that in the flipped over board next time through by cutting the exact opposite angle. Um, so that's what I'm proposing as a solution for this problem when you're, you know, cutting for inlay work. Now, you know, again, it's going to be laser or, or machine specific, you know, each machine, each focal length, if you've got a longer focal length, a four inch lens or something like that, it's going to be much less pronounced. So obviously this is going to vary you know, from person to person, machine to machine, job to job. It's also going to vary based on the material thickness and your speed and your power. If I, if I'm low speed, high power, I'm burning away a lot more material and my kerf's actually going to be a little bit thicker. So I need to be able to come in here and play with this kerf offset to accommodate what I think I'm going to be using for speed and power on my particular job and then run that on a test piece and you know see what your fit is and play with this you know up or down until you get a fit that you're happy with um so going from there is you know i don't have any drawn out here but finger joints are another one where you might actually want to use a negative um so let me let me bring up a, a visual here and this is the way that light burn interprets the off, the kerf offset so by default, if I use a positive kerf offset, it offsets to the outside of a, a shape or the inside of a shape, depending on where it is. That's by default with the positive kerf. I can go negative kerf and actually offset in. So if you look at my settings again, um, if I'm 0.18, for example, it tells me I'm outward. But if I take this and I go to negative 0.18, it shifts me inward. So let's say I've got finger joints that are too tight. I can actually shift all of them inward until I get a nice slip fit that I'm happy with. If they're too loose, I can go outward and do the same thing and add that kerf offset to give me a tighter fit. So that number is not a one number to rule them all. It is meant to be a starting point. And then if you're doing regular cuts where you're not doing insert work or anything like that, obviously set your kerf offset back to zero so that your parts are true to size. So, um, the only other gotcha that I don't see talked about often is that kerf offset in light burn is very dependent on closed shapes. You know, to quote straight from the manual here, uh, it must determine the inside and outside of a shape in order to apply a kerf offset. This setting will only work with closed shapes. So kerf offset on a line or an open shape, uh, you can't do it. It just, the, the software can't determine what's inside, what's outside. So you have to have closed uh, shapes in order for kerf offset to apply. And then the other thing that's light burn specific is depending on your installation and what settings you've changed, some people may not see kerf offset because they might be in beginner mode. So if I look at this uh, layer cut configuration in beginner mode, you'll see that I don't have all those extra settings. I don't have my kerf offset. I don't have my perforation or anything like that. Um, but it says up top that I'm in beginner mode. So what I actually want to do, go into machine settings, toggle off beginner mode. It's the very first uh, option under display graphics. And then when I go back in, you'll see, you know, there's my, there's my kerf offset, there's my tabs, my perforation mode, my lead in, lead out, stuff like that. So it gives me a lot more options to screw up, um, but it's also where I get some of the more important things that I need uh, like kerf. Um, and in a lot, some cases, you know, if I need perforation for something, um, that's there as well. So just know that going in and out of beginner mode, um, I typically turn off beginner mode and just run with it. Um, but you know, I've been using light burn a long time, so you may be more comfortable in beginner mode, but for this particular use case, if you need kerf offset, you've got to turn it off. Uh, I think that just about covers everything that I need. Um, so, you know, again, this is just a quick hit, uh, kind of a response to a conversation we were having in the Lightburn Best Practices and Template Files Facebook group. Um, I'm not saying that I'm the end-all be-all answer to this stuff. I'm just showing it as I see it and offering a possible solution to get better fit when you're doing inlay or finger jointing or anything where your pieces need to mate together. 
Um, and you know, I'm just proposing you go, go with the variance instead of trying to fight against it. So, all right, guys, thanks. And, uh, until next time.